biking on the Zambezi, I think, is one of the greatest privileges I've been lucky enough to experience. It is an amazing feeling. It's a mixture of fear and dread and exhilaration. And every time you go onto that river, you're a little bit afraid. It's one of the most thrilling things I've ever done. Between Victoria Falls and Decca, the Zambezi River flows through a largely untouched wilderness, home to some of the most dangerous whitewater rapids in the world. This is the story of our five-day adventure on the Zambezi River. I love doing the painting. Look at give, give a smile. Nice big rapids where you can capsize. Like my hat. Power. Clever dicking. After careful packing of kit, we set off early in the morning to climb down into the gorge. With rafts and kayaks launched, we waited our turn to face rapid number one. So we're about to start our five day trip. Uh, all the gear is down, um, boats are in, everyone's here. Very exciting. Um, we're just gonna go down and look at this wonderful gorge. Have a, an amazing experience. So we're just at the top of number four. Um, I'm with actor below me here. So after everyone else has run the rapid and I've got those shots, I come back and I get on this croc with Acta. And I'll just try to show you here. Um, we've got this big pelican box that is obviously keeping all of my gear dry. So we now have to strap that down to the center of the croc and just hope we don't flip. Uh, this next rapid coming up is quite a big one, so yeah. I was under for a long time there. Ah, felt like a long time. Whew. Yeah, I was just holding my breath, thinking, don't panic, don't panic. Oh, don't panic, and then I thought, like, okay, I'm starting to panic because I need a fucking breath now. Jeez. Capsize with number 18. That was a good, good flip. So we've just completed our first day on the river. Um, successfully, all limbs intact and sanity as well. Uh, fire's going, camp's pretty much set up and we have a beautiful spot. It is gorgeous. So setting off the next day, we would pack up all of our gear, all of our tents and all of our equipment, put it in the rafts and set off. The 
river has many moods. At times it's very calm and easy to paddle, at other times treacherous and in some places too technical to actually paddle. So we got the waterfall behind us here and Sam and Larry are actually just about to run it in the kayak so it should be quite interesting to watch. The raft has just gone down, uh, which is down below me down there. Um, that was just a little short, short little portage. After all the paddling and portaging that we had done, we would generally, around midday, pull over and have some biltong and cheese for lunch and then a bit of an afternoon sleep just to rest a little bit and get revived and ready for the afternoon session. I think to paddle on the Zambezi, you have to really have a great sense of adventure, a very honest sense of what your limitations are and a good bunch of guys to go down with. It may give you a hiding, but the reward is absolute exhilaration. Getting to the campsite on day two at Lower Muemba was a challenge in itself. We pulled over at the top of the waterfall and then had to portage all the way around it to set up our campsite on a nice, beautiful sandbank. So I was, uh, I was getting some aerial shots this evening and um, I was flying the drone backwards and I thought I had it high enough that I wasn't going to hit the mountain behind us um, stupidly and then yeah I've hit a tree right at the peak of that mountain. This is just a video to show where the drone is so let's zoom in there's the black ridge it's super grainy but there you can see it flashing in that tree there. Got it. So it's the next morning, uh, we got up early and we are on our way up this mountain up here behind us to go and try recover the drone. If you can see behind me, there's a campsite down there. Um, it's quite humid, a lot of sweating, a lot of loose rock. Um, but we think we're in the area now where, where the drone is. So, hopefully some good news. Check, we just found the drone. <laughs> Buck owes me a beer, I found it. Unbelievable, we were literally just standing at the top. We took a selfie on Larry's camera um, and said, no, let's call it off. We're not going to find this. Just make our way back down towards the camp. And there the drone is. How awesome is that? Yes, that is amazing. Good work, man. After finally locating the drone, we were on our way. A little bit behind time, but excited to be back on the water. Often on the river, you do have a sense of approaching danger or potential danger. And I think it causes you to stop thinking about anything that really doesn't matter, to focus on the people you're paddling with, the obstacles ahead, and the absolute privilege of being where you are. and cold. That's gonna be tough, but you need more power. So on day four, we had woken up to unusual weather for that time of year on the Zambezi River. It was cold and wet and miserable, which was not what we were expecting. So to get through the miserable weather, we all jumped on the raft, put the kayaks on the raft, and we were all taking in turns to do some fishing. <laughs> There's a big fish. I don't know what it is about the Zambezi River. Experiencing it is like having it tattooed into your skin. It stays with you. It is a river that is rewarding, but also humbling. You can't afford to make mistakes. The Zambezi will continue to course through your blood and haunt your dreams long after you've left it. Uh, 
think it's an owl. It's pelt. I think what was extraordinary for me on this trip was that it almost felt more wild this time than on any of the other times I've been down. We saw amazing things. There seemed to be even less people in a place where there are always very few people. The wilderness seemed to echo more strongly. All these things give you a sense of a place that is so rare and so precious. And I just, I found it the most amazing trip. Yeah. Over.